Blog Talk Radio. The Alan Alford Sports Talk Show. The Alan Alford Sports Talk Show. Your host is here for the show tonight to interview our special guest. Everybody to another great episode of the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. I am so excited to be with you tonight. We're going to have a fantastic show. Definitely glad to be here. Glad to be with you guys. And it is going to be a wonderful Friday night. Don't forget that call in number. Live call in number is 516 418 5572. Again, it's 516 418 5572. Got a lot in store for you today. But first, before we get the show started, Let's go ahead and thank one of our amazing sponsors, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. So delicious and addicting, you may need a support group. Definitely feel free to visit Chef G's right there in beautiful Tampa, Florida. Get this wonderful sauce and a lot more right there at 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. And if you can't come down to Tampa, that's okay. You can go ahead and visit Chef G's right here at FL bbqsauce.com flbbqsauce.com get yourself any one of the great flavors of classic honey mustard heat wave fusion get yourself a florida sand or rub definitely check it out again it's flbbqsauce.com all the music you hear tonight it is provided by sam scola songs sam scola songs right there in maine he's doing big things We're going to talk about Sam Scola songs and a lot more a bit later. So the intro with Sam Scola and the Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce song, as you can hear right now, it's by Sam Scola. We're going to play that tune for you right now. Let's go. Counting for the ride. Counting for variety, Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce, natural flavor, Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce, Florida gold honey mustard on burgers and ribs, tasty fusion on pork and sausage, Chicken steak tips, a hot heat wave on meatballs and ham. It's a cookout treat, Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Serve on fish and vegetables, Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Chef G's. Florida barbecue sauce, Chef G's, Florida barbecue sauce. 
Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. So delicious and addicting, you may need a support group. Definitely don't forget to see Chef G's right there in beautiful Tampa, Florida, 301 South 22nd Street. Again, you can see him right there at flbbqsauce.com. Again, it's flbbqsauce.com. Don't forget that great sauce. In fact, we got a great call on the line right now. We're going to bring them on, start this show off just right on Friday night. Hey, how you doing so far tonight? Uh, all right, Alan. How you doing? And, uh, thanks, Sam. All right. Um, good. That's good to hear. Everything's yeah. good with you? Yes. That's good to hear. Man, that's awesome. So mm-hmm. glad to hear from you. So how are you enjoying the Olympics so far? I have enjoyed the Olympics, uh, you know, except for a few minor things here and there. But uh, for the most part, I've been enjoying it. And there were some pretty good events today um, in the track and in the uh, – in the men's soccer, you had to—I mean, that was to think that Spain almost almost blew it. Yeah, so definitely get it. Let out our definitely listening audience know what happened. Well, just when you thought that Spain had it all wrapped up, uh, France, of course, came running back, tied up on a penalty shot with about uh, five seconds to go regulation, and then Spain pulls it out in extra time, not going to a shootout and takes the gold medal. So, Oof. with this, that means uh, that in the same gold year, gold and then Spain, Spain and won the Euro Cup and, and the Olympic gold medal, only six weeks apart. Takes the gold medal. So, yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is, it used to be a situation where USA used to always dominate most of the stuff, but it's not a for sure thing. You know, the, it's we not. We do have the lead in the you know, we, we have the we have lead down. Yeah, we do have the lead, but I mean, you know, like you said, other countries bring it, and I just feel like, do you feel, Lou, that sometimes the other countries, they they put a little bit more because it means more to them than it does here in the U.S.? Of course. Yeah, of course. I feel that well, way, too. You know, we're not that great with soccer anyway, so that really doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. Although the women, yeah, you know, yeah, that's because, you know, we're going to pick them out tomorrow. Other yeah, and I, and I think, and I just like you know, what I think it is, I think it's more of an individual type thing, whether you are going to put as much effort into it, Patriot. I think the pros, it depends, but I think, um, I just feel like there are exceptions to the rules here in the U.S., but I feel like other countries, it's unanimous. They take it real serious. Well, you have to. Well, you should. Yeah, and I think, yeah, you know, they, they just have that. That country patriage, and they want to represent their country in the biggest form, biggest stage, and they give it their all. I know with us, it varies. It varies on who you ask. <laughs> you know? Yes. Some give some effort. You know, some give some effort, but they don't want to get hurt. You know, they give 80, 90%. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think it's a, it's a case-by-case basis. I mean, nobody wants to get into it. Let's put that way. Yeah, it's true. With us, it varies. But I think, I think overall, it's it's been it's been great. What do you think about Snoop Dogg doing his thing out there? You know, uh, advertising it like crazy. Not for nothing, but I don't know if Snoop Dogg is you know Olympic material. I mean, he's an entertainer, yes, but I don't know if he you know actually would belong in the belong in the Olympics. I mean, nobody wants to get into it. Yeah. yeah, it's true. You know what it is? It's you know celebrities. They look at it as a platform to get some some advertisement and clout. <laughs> you know, it never used to happen though. I mean, this is fairly new. You know, because on the old days, like, we didn't do that. It was purely about the athletes. Yeah, and you know, it's it's it's. You're right. I just feel like now they look at it as another way to advertise. You know, they find a they right. find a niche. Yeah. You know, I mean, the opening ceremony, you know, was not the, well, I don't think it was not one of the greatest, you know, there was controversy about that. And, uh, you know, that, that, I think it did offend some people. So, you know, you got to watch it when you do this now. Yeah, it, it yeah, definitely so, raised some eyebrows, that opening yeah, ceremony. Yeah, it got to be careful with that because that can turn off people. Luckily, it has to turn off people off because they are watching it more than they did back in the uh, games of 2021, which was, well, a letdown. 
but more people watching it. But you know, you want to be able to keep that together and don't pull off you know any uh, controversial stuff like that. So, <laughs> yeah, I agree. You know, yeah. let's keep it keep it classy. Yeah, it definitely raised my eyebrows. That opened the yeah, yeah. Keep it classy. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. You got a great point, Lou. And you know, it luckily it did not turn a lot of people off. They were like, "What the heck is some this?" But there were some groups out there. They're like, "You are really attacking it." But he also says, "Okay, if you watch it, that's your right. If you don't watch it, that's your choice. If you do watch it, it's your choice. It's of your choice." So they weren't really bashing, you know, you know, because they're like, you know, saying, "Oh, turn off boycott." You know, you you shouldn't be watching this. So at least we didn't get to that point. Yes. Yep. You're right about that. At least we didn't get to yes. that point because there was a person making comments like on the internet. Saying, "Oh, you shouldn't watch it." To what happened? But it didn't go. But it didn't go that way. Yeah, uh, you're right. At least people did. You know, they still, they did turn off some people, but the majority still wins, and a lot of people still watching it. Yeah, I myself. So at least you know it hasn't been. I mean, it had the controversy, but it didn't kill it. No, you're right about that. And you know what? Big major comeback from the NBA basketball team. That was that was amazing. Yeah. That was that was that was stud. You know they had their backs yeah, against the wall big time. And they got it. I mean, that's big time. That's clutch. That's clutch. I, I love what it. Kevin Durant said that you know when the Heat was on, everybody got in the right spots and they just clicked. He said he's never seen that before where a team just, you know, from that many great players and different backgrounds just clicked when the, when the heat was on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. You know, and what else are you hoping that it ends up happening for the rest of the Olympics? I'm hoping the U.S. does take in men's basketball tomorrow. I'm hoping the U.S. women's soccer uh, to pull up. That's going to be a doozy of a match. I'm hoping for that and a few other things. But I don't think that some of these events make any sense whatsoever in being in the Olympics. I mean, uh, the so-called climbing thing, where it is, uh, breaking, which we used to call breakdancing, uh, no. <laughs> you know, some first people all, actually like that breakdancing thing. Where were you in 1984? We're actually, we're actually into it. You know what? I would have to say some people like the breakdancing thing. Believe it or not, I've okay, from the cassettes what I saw. Years ago, it was popular. Come on, you're 40 years too late, people. You know what? Some things go out of style and they bring it back. Yeah, we have. Okay, then tell me this. Why wasn't disco dancing a lot back in the 76 Olympics? Uh, uh, ne- never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give my, I'll have my height with that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm a fan of break dancing. I know it's been out of style for a while, but I wouldn't mind seeing it come back. It's just, especially when you could do that spin, you know, on yeah. the, on your back, the back spin, but then yeah. you kind of go up three quarters. It's kind of cool. Can you, know? Herbie, <laughs> can you hear Herbie Hancock's rocket in the background? Actually, yes, I could. It's called Break It. It's called Break It, folks. Yeah, but it's also the name of a movie as well. <laughs> no, what? There were two movies called Break It. Okay. I got to check that out. Break It was Break It and Break It to Electric Boogaloo. Oh, my God, I am old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am old. Well, I've been around. I've been around a while. Yeah, you, you old well, forget, school. When I was when I was young, you know, that was popular. Breakdancing was when I was growing up. It was. Yeah. It was. It was very popular. I mean, I I tried to do that backspin and so did I. But I just couldn't keep the. You know, you have to keep the momentum going where it's kind of like you slide back and right. it keeps it spinning. I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it. The rhythm where I would keep on spinning. Yeah. But now that it's coming back, yeah. I might give it a try again. <laughs> I think I'm, I think I'm too old. Yep. 
I'm not as young as I used to be. I may I may look young, but I'm not that young anymore. You still a man. Still a man. No thanks. Yeah, yeah, so I can still hear for Herbie Hancock in the background. <laughs> yeah. But My yeah, you know what? <laughs> you got something big coming up this weekend, real big. Yes, we do. We'll we'll, we'll touch on, of course, the uh, NFL preseason. Uh, maybe I'll review a few games tomorrow because the Jets are playing at high noon. Kind of early for a preseason game, but yeah, okay. Uh, we'll discuss maybe a little controversy on the first college football preseason poll because I do I do think there's some controversy in this. You'll understand why if you call tomorrow. Uh, we'll do some more Olympics. Uh, we'll do some major baseball. We'll celebrate the uh, White Sox first fifth, uh, first win since the caveman era. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> little joke, folks. Uh, we got some NBA and NHL news that came across the wire. Uh, WWE, <laughs> the UFC, and our regular features, the ridiculous sign of the week, which I think I have uh, uh, that, that the uh, co-shared honors this week. You'll find out why. Um, sports trivia this week, <laughs> this week in sports history, and the feel-good story of the week. Providing I still have power uh, tomorrow, because I don't know if I have it or not, uh, call 512-543-4662. Uh, again, 512-543-4662 between 4 and 6 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, we were experiencing uh, Hurricane, what's her name uh, this, uh, this, uh, this afternoon? Debbie. Yeah, but uh, we didn't actually get that much damage. It rained a little bit. It came down to about 6 o'clock. Please uh, uh, heavy down force, but no lightning, thunder, or nothing serious. So uh, we put, we did pretty good. Yeah, so that's awesome. That's be... Yeah, I, I got yeah, I got another name for that too. Oh yeah, what's that? Yeah, for those of you who are old like me, you could, you could look at this way: Hurricane Debbie Gibson. Oh, okay. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna kill me for yeah. that one. Yeah, we're the same age too. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely, that's, yeah. that's. My girlfriend got the joke. <laughs> <laughs> So make sure you guys tune in. Give them a call on. Well, actually, first check the YouTube. Type in Enhanced yes, Sports YouTube. Show. YouTube, type in Enhanced Sports Show. Uh, I prefer you to do that, though, uh, like uh, after sure the show, because uh, you might get a little, uh, you know. Well, actually, first check the YouTube. Type in Enhanced yes. Sports Show. Make sure you check yeah. it in. Enhanced Sports Show, uh, enhanced sports show YouTube, show. or you can definitely, between Saturday at 4 and 6 p.m., give them a call. Definitely, Lou will be right there to take yes. your call and make sure you, make sure you yes. do that. Support them. Phone number again is 512 543 4662. Again, it's 512 543 4662. That is tomorrow, Saturday, between 4 and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Zone. The Enhanced Sports Show, Lou, the legend. Make sure you give him a call. Thanks. You're welcome. Anytime. Thank you so much, Lou. Always appreciate you. Okay. Take care of yourself. Thank God you. God bless. Take care now. Always a pleasure hearing from Lou. Make sure you guys support him and give him a call. The show is tomorrow, Eastern Standard Time Zone, between five, between, I'm sorry, between four and six, four and six, Eastern Standard Time Zone. And definitely you can make sure you hear from Lou. That's the man right there. Let me give you that number one more time for you guys. 512-543-4662. Again, it's 512-543-4662. Definitely awesome to hear from Lou. Always great to hear from our callers. And the phone number again for us, 516-418-5572. 516-418-5572. We're going to go ahead and wrap up a little bit in the Olympics, and then I'm going to go into some other great things that are happening along the UFL and the NFL. So that's the thing. If you want to go ahead and get yourself a beautiful home, keys to a home, that's right. You cannot go wrong. 
with CTC ME Mortgage. Whether you live in Texas, whether you live in, here in Florida, CTC ME Mortgage can help you. Really appreciate CTC ME Mortgage being another one of our fantastic sponsors. Definitely give them a call. Your home awaits you. That is the man right there, Kurt McCray. So definitely give them a call or visit the website, ctcmemortgage.com, ctcmemortgage.com, or call or text. Call or text anytime, 346-527-7564. Again, it's 346-527-7564. Definitely, if you need to refinance too, he can help you. If you need to go ahead and sell your home, he can help you. If you need to buy a home, he can help you. you need to rent. Anything that has to do with properties, so Texas or Florida, my man Kirk McCray can help you. Thanks, CTC Emmy Morgan for being one of our great sponsors. In fact, we got another Sam Scola song. It is the CTC Emmy Mortgage song. I'm gonna play that song for you guys, and we're gonna continue on with this wonderful show here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. Let's go. CME Mortgage Company. Make sure you go ahead and give them a call. Kurt McCray is your man. As the song says, 346-527-7564. And it's 346-527-7564. Or you can go ahead and visit them right there at ctcmemortgage.com. Definitely get yourself that great home that you've been wishing for and dying for. Kurt McCray can help you. I want to thank CTC ME Mortgage for being another one of our wonderful sponsors here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. So we're going to go ahead and continue on with our great programming here. And yes, I got to give, got to give Imani Khalif, the Algerian boxer, props for coming back and getting a gold medal. Let me go ahead and give them a round of applause. Yeah, that that's really took a lot of mental fortitude and toughness to be misdiagnosed and misinformed by people that this was a transgender situation and it's not. It is a female and it's always been a female. 
they went ahead and came back and stayed the course and won a gold medal. And that's really, that's something that really I want to park on just a little bit. To be a great athlete, it takes a lot more than just physical attribute. It takes maturity and it takes a lot, a lot of mental toughness. You are going to have things that are going to happen. Maybe not this situation where your gender gets confused, but you are going to have some situations that are going to challenge you throughout your career. A lot of it is unfair, unfortunately. A lot of it is perception, but you have to fight through that. And it is wonderful to see that Algerian boxer Imani Khalif fought through that and got a, got got herself the gold. I mean, that is phenomenal. A lot of people with this type of situation could have just folded up and kind of just kind of quit. They didn't do that. So that is awesome. It is really important, impressive. So definitely props. I love to see when somebody perseveres through adversity and reaches the final level. That's awesome. So I'm going to talk, you know, a bit about what we got going on, and that is in the UFL. And there's a lot of things going on. First and foremost, if you are trying to go ahead and reach a dream, I really implore for you to go ahead and check out theufl.com and sign up for one of the last two showcases the last two showcases are going to be coming up in September. Let me give you that date on that. And this is the one that I, I feel like I'm going to show up to this right here in Orlando. I went to the XFL open showcase and I, I don't see that being any different for me to show up again. So let me go ahead and, and let you guys know about that. Let me pull this up for you. Yes, so I have those dates here. So it's September 29th at 7 o'clock a.m. Right here in Orlando, Florida, Celebration High School. And the final one is October 20th in San Diego. Marathon, Math, Marathon Christian School. I'm sorry if I messed up the name on that. Yes. And that's at 7 o'clock a.m. San Diego. Check out the UFL. I'm sorry I butched up the name on that. But definitely you got to show up. These are the last two, and that's it. There has been a lot of players that have joined the UFL to the X of, I'm sorry, the UFL to the NFL much more than I've seen last year. And I think the number's about the same, but I do feel a lot better about this year. I know that there wasn't too many positional players that actually made it all the way to the roster. I feel more confident that this time around it will happen. One of the biggest reasons is because it's, it's a merged league between the UFL, between the USFL and the UF and the XFL. That means the competition was a lot greater. And you got such such great players, Ricky Pearson. I mean, you got, you know, right here in Tampa Bay, Sal Canella. And I'm curious to see, now that preseason is starting, it, you're going to find out how it ends out. I know Jake Bates had a great to, – to make it to the final – to the final cut, final roster. It's not guaranteed, but I just I just love this these selections here. Akeem Butler – that's who I, I was saying that should have gotten signed. And coincidentally, a week later after I put up that post, he did get signed. So, yes, Jacob Saylors for the for the running back for the Giants. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I mean, you got some great, great players here. And I really do think they should have more. You know, you got to get my guy Savion Patton out there. And that's from the Brahmas. Let's see. So far, the Brahmas have wide receiver John Tree Kirkland and Rex. Let me just see here. Sunahara. Let me just see if there's anybody else from the Brahmas. Kalimi. Cole Levard. Julian Davenport. So 
Yeah, I mean, these are some Zach uh, Zach Morton. These are some great players, and, and I really do hope that they make it to the end of the rainbow and get and get you know get that uh, position starting position on the NFL. I know it's it's you know that's how competitive NFL football is, folks. When I started covering football, that's one of the first things I checked into is what are the odds? What are the odds? Are you making it to the NFL? The odds are 1.4, 1.4%. And you might be like, hey, how is that so possible that it's 1.4? Well, it's 1.4 because you have so many guys chasing the same dream. And that's what makes it difficult for everyone else. So many guys in the same pot going at the same dream. I mean, even one of the owners, The Rock, he tried to make it to the NFL and did not make it. So, I mean, it turned out went wonderful for him, you know, but it's it's not a life making it to the NFL that everybody gets. But it is something that you can't give up on your dream. Can't give up. So definitely props to this list. It's awesome. I'm hoping that they add some more before – it's over because training camp is starting to wind down a little bit. I mean, it's not over yet, but now they're starting to incorporate the games, and then that means a little less on the practice field. So it goes fast. Training camp, to me, seems to fly by. So we will see what happens. I'll keep you up to date. And, again, definitely check out those signings at theufl.com. There is a small nominal fee. You'll see that on the website. Again, it's September 29th. That's Orlando, 7 o'clock a.m. Celebration High School, San Diego. Maranatha, Maranatha, there you go, Christian School. Maranatha Christian School, 7 o'clock a.m. San Diego. So check it out. And I will be going down in September 29th. That is... Let me see here. This is coming up. September 29th. That is a Sunday, actually. That is a Sunday. I remember when I did it for the XFL, it was on a Saturday. So that is a that is a little interesting. It's on a Sunday. Expect me to be there. I'll be covering it. And it's going to be awesome. We're going to switch gears. Oh, let me just put this up here. Let me just put this up. So that was the UFL news. Now we're going to switch gears and talk NFL news. It seemed like <laughs> when you thought this deal was dead with Brandy Ayuk, it still might have some life to it. You know, the 49ers, I think they were checking the market and there was no trade that was done. So it seemed like. Brandon Ayuk is still in the mix for making a deal with the 49ers. I hope they make this deal and just get it over with. This has been dragging out so long. And it's one of those things that's kind of frustrating because it's, you got to keep hearing it all the time. And, you know, sometimes when you get a great opportunity, when you're negotiating and a great deal, sometimes when you wait too long, you actually miss the great opportunity for the best deal you could have gotten. You got to look at it for what it's worth and you got to try to negotiate the best deal. But at a certain point, when you don't take it, when it's good on the table, you might actually pass up a better opportunity than what you're actually going to get. So keep that in mind. I've seen it happen quite a few times. And luckily for Brandon Ayuk, it's, it's coming back around, but it seemed like they're, they're still trying to work it out with him. And we'll see what happens. I just I just hate to see guys just trying to get more, more, more. And then all of a sudden, the team changes their mind. They're like, all right, well, we can't afford you. And they move on. I've seen that. So we'll see what happens there. I got to say the Bucks are looking very good in training camp. I love what I'm seeing there. Definitely Baker Mayfield. You could tell he's got more pep in his step. Now he got that big, big contract extension. So I feel really good about the Bucks. You know, uh, we don't have much time for Mike Evans. I mean, he, he is, you could tell that he's, you could tell what a guy is starting to get up there in age is that when they 
take breaks. They sit on the water <laughs> cooler. They frequently take breaks where if it was the old Mike Evans, they wouldn't take breaks like that. But now he's more like a vet. He takes you know, he takes a lot of breaks. So the Bucks got to do some, something big this year because you don't have much time for a future Hall of Famer to keep playing on the field. You got to go ahead and go out there. And the future Hall of Famer got to make sure he catches those balls, man. You got to make sure you catch them. So we will see. I'll keep you up to date on the Bucks, but they are looking real strong. They are looking really good. I really hope that the Bucks do keep Sal Canella. He's an outstanding tight end. I mean, if you got to move to wide receiver, or you know, you got to put him in. That guy's that guy's elite. He's a he's he got yards out the catch. Yak. That's one of his big things. I think. Tight end is what you should put him in as, what he's familiar with. But if not, worst case scenario, wide receiver, you got to give that guy an opportunity. He's tall, he can catch, and most importantly, he loves yards at the catch, is what they call yak. So the Bucks they're looking great. And keep you guys up to date. There's going to be a lot of charitable events that the Bucks are holding. Make sure you keep an eye on for that. I know, uh, speaking of Mike Evans, he has his gala coming up soon. Usually when the gala shows up that he has, usually the bowling event shows up right after that. And there's got a few more that's going on. So keep connected with the Bucks. So definitely do that. And there has been quite a few fights that have happened in training camp. I know people get worried about those things. Hey, this is training camp. It's hot out there. <laughs> You're doing two a days. It's a lot of hard work. So these things flare up and happen. Guys are competitive. Guys are trying to make it. You know, you're trying to have fun, but you're not trying to have too much fun because you are a lot of times auditioning for a spot. And unless you're a vet, like a Mike Evans or somebody, you're in the middle of the road or something. You, you're you vying for a position, and there's a young guy competing. So it does get competitive. It gets, you know, those competitive juices. It gets hot. and You got to practice how you practice, how you play. And uh, I saw the most unique drill was the one with the water, like, hose to where the Ravens did it. Got to give the Ravens credit for that, where they were practicing fumbles. And they were pouring water on the receiver and the ball. And you had to go down there and fall on it. It's actually a very good drill. If you practice that repetition of falling on the ball, a lot of guys don't practice that. They'll try to pick it up with their hands and then not pick it up cleanly. What you're taught to do is fall on the ball, lay on it, and cover yourself up. Because guys try to pull it out from them underneath the pile. So I was a pretty interesting drill. Check it out, the Ravens. And, man, you know, I can't believe that preseason is starting up already. It's It just goes by fast. So, football be here. Get your, you know, fantasy football team ready because it's, it's coming. It's coming. You know, speaking of that, the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show is working on something really, really big. I won't divulge how it would work out. Praying that we get that opportunity. And I think you guys will be very, very happy. But if we are, it's an opportunity. I won't divulge it yet because I don't like to. One thing about me is people ask me, how come you don't like to pre-advertise a lot of events? And I'll tell you why. I don't like to pre-advertise. Certain events I will, but I'm always leery about pre-advertising certain events i will put up maybe about 20 to 30 percent of events as far as pre-advertising the reason why is because hey you know it's a blessing to show up to these events i don't want to cut off my blessing by kind of like quote quote people might perceive it as bragging you know and i don't want to give that impression Plus, it's a safety thing, too. I, you know, I, you know, unfortunately, there is some haters out there of the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. I want to keep my mind focused on doing a great job 
for the organization that I'm doing media coverage on, the players and everybody involved, and of course yelling out for sports like show. I don't want it. I don't want to bring any negative energy to anybody's event. So sometimes I don't. Sometimes I pre-advertise some events. I do it depends on the situation and the event. So that's why you got to keep tuned in. But I will always make sure that anytime we do cover an event, the company that does give us the media access does get their props and much, much more. So, you know, I will pre-advertise some, but I sometimes I don't pre-advertise all. And a lot of times I feel like you don't want to, you know, I love what, what, you know, Joe Burrow said. I love what Joe Burrow said. And he said, sometimes you got to work in silence. And I, I agree with that. Sometimes you got to work in silence. You can't be like a broken chainsaw and let everybody know what you're about to do or what you're working on. Because, you know, sometimes those people can interfere with you getting that blessing. So sometimes you got to work in silence. It's unfortunate, but it has worked to a lot of times your advantage by doing that. Having said that, one thing that will work in your advantage that I will let out of the hat out of the bag is for you to make sure you make your travel destination with another one of our fantastic sponsors, Pushpin Adventures. Pushpin Adventures can help you with a destination wedding, international travel, group travel, couple travel, travel by yourself, whether you're short, long distances, Pushpin Adventures can make that dream vacation a reality. Make sure you go ahead and visit pushpinadventures.com or you can go ahead and do so much more by getting something customized by simply just giving a call to Monique at Pushpin Adventures, 626-838-1006, 626-838-1006. Pushpin Adventures is a fantastic sponsor. They can do so much more. That is Monique. And without further ado, I'm going to play another great song by Sam Scola Songs. It is a push pin adventure song. Let me go ahead and play that. And we're going to continue on with another fantastic show here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. Here is none other than the push pin adventure song by Sam Scola Songs. Make 
make sure you give Push Print Adventures a call, folks, for those travel needs. Anywhere, any place, give Monique a call. Phone number again is 626-838-1006. And it's 626-838-1006. That's Monique right there. She will make that dream a reality. Make sure you go ahead and check out pushpinadventures.com or give Monique a call. She will take great care of you. Again, the number is 626-838-1006. And let me give you that website too, pushpinadventures.com. If you want to check out that cruise, it's pushpinadventures.com backslash version. Give them a call. That's awesome. Really appreciate Pushpin Adventures. Appreciate you guys too. So much more to go on with the NFL and a lot more. I'm going to go ahead and take a little quick break with another great Sam Scola song. I'm going to go ahead and play that song for you right now. We'll come back with a lot more here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. It's going to be great times like always here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. Let's go. Appreciate Sam Scola songs. In fact, now is a good time to talk about the one and only Sam Scola songs. All the fantastic music you hear tonight is brought to you by Sam Scola songs. Really thank Sam Scola songs and his wife Mary. That is outstanding music that he produces. The great thing is you can hear all these great tunes again and again and again. Check out Sam Scola songs. All these songs are available on YouTube and Spotify. YouTube and Spotify, check them out. And also, if you want to go ahead and sign Sam Scola Songs to that big time deal, he is somebody who's ultra deserving of it. He will do a lot of great things for you. Great guy. Check him out. Sing along with Sam at gmail.com. You know, sing along with Sam at gmail.com. Can't go wrong with Sam Scola Songs. That's right. Can't go wrong with Sam Scola songs. Appreciate Sam Scola. Definitely right out of Maine. Got to take him up on that great lobster dinner there. So, yes, we're going to continue on with the Allen Offered Sports Talk show. And we're going to go ahead and talk a bit about boxing. That's right. Boxing news. Question is, will Edgar Belanga stand a chance against Sal Canelo Alvarez? 
And let me just say, I like Edgar Berlanga. He actually, I've had a chance to be in a press conference and ask him a question. He answered really cool. Anytime I get a chance to ask one questions, anytime I interview them, they, I don't forget that. They always hold special heart, place in my heart, you know? And I like Edgar Berlanga, even though he does some things that are kind of off the rail. Do I think he has a chance to beat Sal Canelo? And this is with all due respect. No, I don't. I'm sorry. It's not trying to put Edgar Berlanga down. I have to be honest in my assessment and my opinion. They got to be fear in that. And what they want me is that I'm not a liar. I am not a liar. If you're asking me to be a liar, that won't happen. I got to be straight. Got to be honest with you. Yes, Edgar Berlanga does have some power to it, but I just don't see him beating or coming really competitive with Sal Canelo. See it at all. And I think the strategy to talk as much junk and be so disrespectful, that being Edgar, is going to backfire. Because I do feel as if Edgar Berlanga was maybe respectful, maybe quieter, soft-spoken about this fight. Not like, you know, not being scared or anything, but just you know, show Sal Canelo some respect, I felt like that would have been a better strategy. You know why? Because when you get a vet, you're boxing, and a guy is kind of giving you a lot of respect. I don't care what anyone says. Indirectly, you kind of take your foot off the gas a bit. You still are out there to fight and win a fight. Don't get me wrong. But you may not take them as seriously as you should. Maybe just a notch. The fact that Edgar Berlanga went way off the charts with talking trash, trying to put down Canelo, I think is a bad, bad move. Because now Canelo is not only going to try to beat you, he's going to put some extra sauce on it. I do think he's just too skilled, too technical of a boxer, too good defensively. He's got strong hands, too. He's fit, fought guys bigger and stronger than Edgar Berlanga. He went up in weight. I just don't see Edgar Belanga competing in this fight. And that's more about skill than anything. And he saw about skill and IQ. I agree with that. What he said, like, you need to have IQ in there. But you're fighting against one of the guys that have the highest IQ in the in in uh, boxing. I mean, he is a guy who lost to Floyd Mayweather and just turned around and got smarter better defensively all around. You know, the only person I think that could beat Sal Canella is Terrence Crawford. Uh, it's the only guy who I think that has a chance to beat him. And I know Terrence would fight him smartly. He wouldn't he wouldn't let Sal Canella set his feet and throw in definitely not any body punches and throw that good right hook. I just think that he would avoid that by moving around not running he still would be in a pocket but he would stay from the outside use his technical skill to box sal canelo and his fantastic defense it'll be tough for kind of sal to set his feet sal needs to set his feet and throw and that's why i think edgar belango is going to get knocked out because at some point edgar is going to show that machismo as he would say that bravado and try to bang with canelo and I think that's a bad move because that's when Canelo's going to set his feet, hit him with some vicious body shots, hit him with that right hook, and Edgar's going to find out the guy punched a lot harder than I thought. And it's just it's just not going to end well. I don't see this fight making it to the eighth round. I don't. Ninth round tops, let's just say. But I think it's going to end in a, a knockout. Plenty of knockouts by Edgar Belanga. I don't see Edgar winning this fight. As much as I would like to tell you differently, I just don't see it happening. I just think Sal Canelo, now that he's on his radar big time, because Edgar has been been talking so much, it's not going to end well, and it's going to be it's going to be a win for Sal Canelo. That's that's my prediction. I don't see anything that's going to change my mind on that whatsoever. I think Edgar made it worse for him. In fact, by doing all that junk talking, <laughs> I really do. 
And I do think Terrence could beat him, but Terrence would have to be very, very smart and fight him, you know, kind of like, I would say somewhat like Floyd a bit, hit and run, not run away where you're looking like you're on, you know, got sneakers and stuff, but he, he can't sit there and let Sal Canella set his feet and throw punches, even if it's like, okay, let me get some hits in and I'll let you get some. I just don't see Terrence winning that type of fight at all. But this is going to be Sal Canelo. I'm sorry, not Sal Canelo. Canelo Alvarez night all night against Edgar Belenga. It's not going to happen. And Canelo's going to win. Having said that, I'll keep you guys up to date on more, more boxing news. You know, definitely it's great that I know that There's some more fights coming up later this year. I'll keep you guys up to date on that. And I'll also let you guys know in the future, uh, you know, I'm thinking about covering another boxing fight. We'll see. It's been a minute, but we'll see. (laughs) I'll let you guys know about that too. So, yes, and I got a lot of great things um, coming up with, I will let you know as much with the Rays going to their games and we will, I'll keep you guys posted on that too. I'll let you guys see that, but definitely it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. Awesome. Awesome for the Rays. I'm going to try to enjoy as many games I can for the Rays. I've made it my mission because unfortunately, if you haven't heard, they did, Signed the deal to get a new stadium. The stadium is going to be in St. Pete, and it's going to be downtown St. Pete. I mean, it, I, it is better than leaving. I will agree with that their way, but I still don't feel like the Rays solved the issue, and that was the location, making it easier for people to assess. Moving it from one part of St. Pete, just moving it downtown is not really – solving any issues what people have but we'll see it is going to be a nice looking stadium i heard the roof is it's going to be closed i i love retractable roofs i don't it's not going to have a retractable roof either so we'll see but yes i'm gonna try to go as many race games i can while i can at that because i actually like the race stadium believe it or not i know it doesn't look great on tv the TV optics are not the best, but I really like the stadium. I think it's a cool indoor stadium. I've been to the Astrodome. I think the Ray Stadium is much nicer. I think it's much cooler. It's got a lot of history there. Dwayne Box hit his 3,000 hit on a home run. They had some great postseason runs. Evan Longoria has a statue. I'm sure they're going to move that statue to the new location. So I'm not worried about that, but Enjoy it. If you haven't been down to the Rays game, check it out. Tampa Bay Rays. I, they have a Rays tank there, too, where you can touch the Rays. So check that out. The Rays they are my second favorite baseball team behind the Yankees. But having said that, I'm fair and honest in my assessment. The greatest comeback that I've ever seen in sports, in baseball, that is, and biggest choke job, go to the Yankees against the Red Sox in 2005. Yep, I'm, I could have their year wrong, but yes. Basically, the year where they went, the Yankees up 3-0, and the Red Sox came back. Won four straight. Best comeback I've ever seen. So, I will keep you guys posted on a lot of great things that have happened here with the Allen Alfred Sportsbook Show. Love doing this show. We're going to go ahead and start now that it's, you know, things are slowed down a little bit as far as traveling. I'm going to start re getting more guests back on Friday nights. I know I've went away for that for a little bit and predominantly because I've been traveling hectic. I don't usually like to have, I usually never try to schedule a guest to come on my show when I'm not here or at home so to speak. If I have a guest, you know, outside, that's fine, but 
I don't usually like to schedule a guest when I'm actually not going to be in the office or not not home, so to speak, because things can happen. And I don't want them to, you know, get the bad impression of our show. But that is going to start back up. We're going to start bringing guests back on, new guests on Friday night. So look out for that. Working on a few right now, in fact. So definitely I appreciate you guys. You guys are fantastic. Really appreciate all the likes, the comments. Really appreciate, you know, you guys doing your thing and, and supporting the Allen Alfred Sports Talk show. Really appreciate that. In fact, let me go ahead and take another great caller here on the Ellen Alfred Sports Talk Show. Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you? Doing wonderful. Thank you for asking about yourself. Okay. Yep, we got training camp that's winding down a little bit, and preseason games are starting this this weekend, in fact. So what are your thoughts yeah. about the, the Bills? Um. Well, I haven't actually seen them playing anything, but I think they could do good. Yeah, I think they're going to do well. I, You know, I, I think – I know they lost Stefan Diggs, but I love what Josh Allen is saying. He's not he's not saying he missed Stefan Diggs. He's keeping focus on the guys that are there in camp. And I, yeah. I think that's a great sign. Yeah, me too. Yeah, that's a, that's a true leader. You know, a true leader doesn't always let everything out of the bag. If he did miss Stefan Diggs, he wouldn't say it, which is good. I think that's a good thing. Talk about Josh Allen and his leadership ability. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I, I do think the Bills going to have a, a very good year this year. I feel positive about it. I know Stefan Diggs did get a lot of catches, but I think the problem with Stefan Diggs was he was kind of like that, that – plant that you got to just keep giving it food and all the time always you can't stop and sometimes that becomes a lot for a a quarterback that they have to continuously throw the ball at a certain guy I think when you have a dynamic where more guys get more touches that's better for the team oh definitely yeah because you know you can't have one guy just always constantly wants the ball and the other guys, you know, give them here and there. But I think the Bills are going to do great. Are you going to play fantasy football? Uh, Probably. I'm in a new PN league. Yeah, I'm definitely going to play fantasy football. I love fantasy football. It's – it's yeah. even when I don't win or get close to winning, it's, it's the unpredictable thing about it that kind of keeps you going back. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't really. I just pick players. I don't really pay attention to my team. Yeah, so you got to pick the players, guys, and you got to take make sure you. The advice I can give you, if you pick a player to start, make sure that player is actually playing that week. Make sure that they're not on, they're not injured. Make sure they at least are playing that week. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. But yeah, I definitely I looking forward to talking to you tomorrow during the show. Oh yes. Awesome. So make sure you guys call in four to six PM Saturday. That's tomorrow. Eastern Standard Time Zone to lose show. Five one two five four three four six six two. Five one two five four three. Or six six two, you'll be able to hear Lou. You'll be able to hear the wonderful Diane, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and you'll be able to hear the rest of the callers also. That's right. Yep, a lot of things going on. I'm looking yep. forward to talking to you. I'm looking forward to, talk to you, talking to you too. Thank you so much. So always You're a pleasure welcome. to hear from you. Thank you. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you again so much for calling in. You're welcome. Thank you. Take care now. Well, you too. Thank you. Bye now. Always awesome to hear, from Diane. That's fantastic. Yes, that is an advice I had to give my son. He was coming in close to beating someone that week. He started a player, great player, 
but he made a foo pas. He did not make sure that player was playing that week. And yes, he did start a player who did not play, and that ended up costing him a win. So I kind of take the blame on that because I should have maybe emphasized that as a dad a bit more. But I'm going to let you guys learn that. Make sure when you play fantasy football that the player you select is indeed starting and playing in the game because it doesn't matter how great they are. If they're not playing, it's zero points. That is advice I can give you. Make sure that player that you select is indeed going to play in the game. And you could also, another tip I'll give you is if the game is, let's say, on Thursday and Wednesday is the day you pay close attention the day before the game, if they are right there, if they're going to be playing. Usually if it's doubtful and it's close to a day before the game and they're still on a doubtful status most cases not at all 90 percent of the time they're not going to play if it's doubtful the day before the game but keep an eye out make sure you check it and recheck it and triple check it that your guy's going to actually start in that game because if he's splitting reps between him and someone else at least you have a chance if they're playing in the game and you have positive points. He'd even need to get a lot of points, that player, but because he chose a player that had zero points, it was game over. So make sure to start. Make sure you continuously check that. And that's what I'll be doing. It's fantasy football is coming up. Make sure you guys get your rosters. Get ready. That's cool. I'm hoping. These are things that I hope happen for the UFL. I'm hoping the UFL adopts some type of, you know, fantasy football. I know it's a shorter season. I'm also hopeful that they come up with a Madden game for the UFL. I know it's a lot of moving parts, but, hey, that would be cool that you can – they update the players. Why not, you know? Why not get a UFL game? That would be cool. So – we will see. Keep you up to date. And again, I will be at the UFL Showcase on September 29th. Celebration High School, Orlando. The reason why that's important is because that actually officially kind of starts the next season. So we'll see. If you have, if you want to participate in the showcase again, it's theufl.com. Theufl.com. You guys are fantastic, and I definitely wanted to let you know we got a lot of things going on here in the Allen Alfred Sports Talk show. I did want to give you a heads up. We will see about a lot more here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk show. I don't want to let the, the head out of the bag. We'll, I'll keep you posted. Make sure you go ahead and follow the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show right there. The Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show right there Facebook. The Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. And make sure you follow there on Instagram and Twitter. It's Allen Alfred. And it's Allen Alfred underscore for Instagram and Twitter, Allen Alfred. Really appreciate you guys subscribing to the YouTube channel at Allen Alfred. And you guys are fantastic. Really appreciate you. So what we're going to do is wind the show down and also make sure you just definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, make sure you check out Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. So delicious and addicting, you may need a support group. Make sure you visit Chef G's right there in beautiful Tampa, Florida at 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. Definitely check them out there. If you can't come down to Tampa, it's all right. Check them out right there at flbbqsauce.com. flbbqsauce.com. Can't go wrong with that delicious, delicious sauce. It is fantastic. And another thing you can't go wrong with is bumping your head to some Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce while you're eating it and listening to Sam Scola songs. So let's play 
That's Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce song by Sam Scola Song. Comes in for the variety, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. A natural flavor, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. Florida gold honey mustard on burgers and ribs. Tasty fusion on pork and sausage. A classic taste for chicken steak tips. A hot heat wave on meatballs and ham. It's a cookout treat. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Serve on fish and vegetables. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. G's Florida Barbecue Sauce, so delicious and addicting, you may need a support group. Definitely don't forget to check them out at 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida, or you can visit them right there at flbbqsauce.com, and it's flbbqsauce.com. Really appreciate Sam, Chef G's, appreciate you guys, too, here supporting the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. So, yes, it is fantastic. I always do this show. Let me go ahead and thank all of our great callers. Thank Lou. Thank Diane. Thank you guys for supporting the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. You guys are fantastic. Really appreciate you. A lot more things coming around the corner. I'm going to make sure I keep you guys updated on that. But definitely, as Joe Burr says, sometimes you got to walk in silence. When the time is right, I'll let you guys know. But definitely, in the meantime, you have a great weekend. Want to wish my fantastic son, Byron Alfred, a happy birthday. He has His birthday is actually on the 12th, but we're going to go ahead and celebrate it this weekend. So, Byron, Byron Alfred, happy birthday to you. He's three years old. Love you, little guy. Love you to death. Papa loves you. Byron Alfred, man, he's a man. So, you guys have a great weekend. Take care. Be blessed. Be well. Thank you, Sam Scola Songs. Definitely don't forget all those great songs that you heard are available on YouTube and Spotify. Sam Scola Songs will be found there. Thank you, songwriter Sam Scola Songs and his wife, Mary. And you can reach Sam Scola right there at singalongwithsam at gmail.com. Singalongwithsam at gmail.com. Definitely happy birthday again to Byron Alfred. You guys have a great weekend. Take care. Be blessed. Be well. Until we meet again on our next show, take care for now. Let's thank all the fans before.